Hi, today we are going to learn about mechanism of stomatal movement. Before going into the mechanism of stomatal movement, let us look at an overview of the stomata, the structure of stomata. We remember that uh, stomata has an opening which is known as a stoma. It is flanked on both sides by two cells known as the guard cells. The guard cells are surrounded by epidermal cells which we call as subsidiary cells. And we also learned that when the guard cells become turgid, the stomata is open. When the guard cells become flaccid, the stomata is closed. There are two theories about the mechanism of stomatal movement. First is the starch sugar hypothesis. This theory was proposed by Lloyd and elaborated and explained by Sayer and Scott. This theory holds that transpiration is controlled by the interconversion of starch and sugar and also the effect of pH and the enzymes that control these interconversions. Now let's see what happens during daytime in the guard cells. During daytime we know that photosynthesis happens. So the concentration of carbon dioxide is very low. Also the pH increases. The increase in pH activates the enzymes which help in the conversion of starch to sugar. The concentration of sugar in guard cells increases and this increases the osmotic potential of the guard cell, thereby making the guard cell, guard cell sap hypertonic. The hypertonic guard cell now has an increased osmotic potential which draws water from the neighboring subsidiary cells into the guard cell by endosmosis. Endosmosis causes the guard cells to be turgid and hence the stomata becomes open. Now let's see what happens during night time. During night time, there is no photosynthesis, hence the concentration of carbon dioxide increases. This carbon dioxide combines with water in the cell sap and forms carbonic acid which is an acid and it decreases the pH. Now this decrease in pH activates the enzymes needed for the conversion of sugar to starch. Starch is insoluble in water, hence the guard cell sap becomes hypotonic. This hypotonic guard cell now has low osmotic potential and this leads to exosmosis that is the cell sap from the guard cells moves out of the guard cell into the subsidiary cells. After exosmosis, the guard cells now become flaccid. This leads to the closing of stomata. There were a few demerits for this hypothesis. The first one is starch sugar interconversion is a very slow process 
and it does not account for the rapid movement of stomatal opening and closure. The second one is glucose, that is sugar, was not detected in the guard cells. The third one is it did not explain the effect of blue light in the opening and closing of stomata. Now let's move on to the next theory, theory of K plus transport and hormonal regulation. This theory was proposed by Levitt and it holds that the opening and closing of stomata is controlled by the exchange of ions between guard cells and subsidiary cells. Now let's see what happens during daytime and nighttime. During daytime, starch is converted to phosphoenol pyruvate. PEP. This phosphoenol pyruvate now combines with carbon dioxide to form oxaloacetic acid. Oxaloacetic acid is later converted into malic acid. Malic acid is broken down into malate and H plus ions. This H plus ions in the guard cells are exchanged for K plus ions from the subsidiary cells. So there is a huge influx of K plus into the guard cells. This increase in potassium ions in the guard cells increases the osmotic potential leading to endosmosis. Endosmosis, as we all know, results in the turgid condition of guard cells. And we know what happens next. The stomata. Now let's see what happens during night time. During night time, we know that the carbon dioxide concentration increases. And this carbon dioxide combines with water to form carbonic acid, thereby decreasing the pH. And we know that water absorption is very low during night time. So this decreased pH and the low water content activates the stress hormone in plants known as the abscisic acid. This abscisic acid alters the permeability of the guard cells and inhibits the K plus influx. As the potassium channel, the K plus influx is inhibited, the guard cells has a decreased OP, that means it turns hypotonic. And the water moves out of the guard cells by exosmosis. Guard cells become flaccid. And stomata closes. I hope you got a brief idea about the mechanism of stomatal movement and thereby how it controls transpiration. As we learned, during daytime the stomata remains open for gaseous exchange and transpiration, and during nighttime the stomata remains closed to reduce the rate of transpiration. Thank you.